Epic versus Apple has taken a turn I did not expect, where tweets are now being cited as reasons for Apple to not comply with the EU's regulations. Yes, Apple's really bringing tweets up in court now to try and get out of doing the right thing. What the hell am I talking about? That must have been a nasty tweet, right? Well, let's take a look. Here's a tweet from Tim Sweeney in February, not long ago. It's a couple weeks ago. Many folks on here think of me as an Apple hater. Nothing could be further from the truth. There is no other group of designers and engineers on earth who can build as great of products as Apple when they are directed towards that end. The woes begin when they are directed not to. Apple leadership faces some massive decisions in the coming weeks and the contradictions between their stated principles and the intended and actual consequences of their presented policies are reckoned with. The App Store monopoly, the digital goods payments monopoly, the tax, the suppression of true information about competing purchasing options, the blocking of competing web browser engines, and outright destruction of web apps. It doesn't have to be this way. Apple is a few bold and visionary decisions away from being the company they once were and that they still advertise themselves to be. Beloved brand to consumers, partner to developers, and overlord to none. This is a phenomenal post. Again, as an Apple fanboy and a Tim Sweeney fanboy, he did a great job here. He covered this really well, specifically this ending bit, Apple becoming what they advertise themselves as and used to be. Beloved to consumers, partner to developers, and overlord to none. That's what Apple was built on. I love the old photo of the Steves too. This is great. This is Tim being Tim. So you look at this tweet and you're like, oh, yeah, that's a nice, kind way of explaining things. And you see what he updated with earlier today. This is the post Apple cited when banning the Epic Game Store from competing with iOS App Store under the... E under the EU's new DMA laws, criticism of Apple equals untrustworthiness in Apple's leadership's bleak vision of their future relationship with app developers. What the hell? I actually can't believe this. Paul Graham, the original creator of Y Combinator, one of the, the most based startup land people there is, Apple just terminated Epic's developer account. And they admitted that this tweet was one of the reasons. We don't want to think about Apple being evil. It would be so inconvenient. We don't want to switch to Android. But I see ever more signs that the power has corrupted them. Here's the actual post from Epic themselves, which I think is very important. We recently announced that Apple approved our Epic Games Sweden AB developer account. We intended to use this account to bring the Epic Games Store and Fortnite to iOS devices in Europe, thanks to the Digital Markets Act. To our surprise, Apple has terminated that account, and now we cannot develop the Epic Games Store for iOS. This is a serious violation of the DMA. It shows Apple has no intention of allowing true competition on iOS. The DMA requires Apple to allow third-party app stores like Epic Game Store. To be clear, they also require those third-party app stores pay Apple absurd fees, but Apple is required to allow them to exist. And Epic was one of the few companies willing to eat those costs because they wanted this to exist that badly. Sadly, that's not going to happen. Article 6.4 of the DMA says clearly, the gatekeeper shall allow and technically enable the installation and effective use of third-party software applications or software application stores using or interoperating with its operating system and allowing those software applications or software application stores to be accessed by means other than the relevant core platform service of the gatekeeper. In not weird EU legal bullshit, this says other companies should be able to make app stores and not have to use your app store to install things. In terminating Epic's developer account, Apple is taking out one of the largest potential competitors to the Apple App Store. This is a big deal. People love giving Epic shit for the game store, but they have some of the most friendly to developer policy of any software store in history. They charge a laughable 12%, and they also waive your Epic Games Unreal Engine licensing fee, which knocks it all the way down to 9% compared to 30 on Steam, as well as on the App Store with Apple. Epic's goal has always been very clear. They want to support developers because if more developers can make more money, they can theoretically spend more money buying things from Epic, like Unreal Engine and all the crazy things in their asset store and such. If game devs can make 30 plus percent more money from their sales, they can make much more back from their efforts and they have more resources to spend on making more games. Epic has an obvious market incentive to help developers be more successful. And when they see these other companies hurting developers, they see an opportunity to spend all the money they made from Fortnite trying to fix this issue. And that's what they've been trying. That's why they're going to court. That's why they've thrown away the cash cow that was Fortnite on iOS, because their goal is to empower developers long-term and to let Tim Sweeney do his thing as he does this, because he 
is a game dev at heart and he is dying on so many hills in this process and it's been incredible to watch. He has not backed down a single tiny bit throughout this whole process and the result hopefully will result in real change. But at this point, Apple's being awful. To be very clear, Apple terminated Epic's new developer account. They terminated the old one when they added custom payment options to Fortnite. But here they're terminating the new one they just made following the EU rules. They're undermining our ability to be a viable competitor and they're showing other developers what happens when you try to compete with Apple or are critical of their unfair practices. If Apple maintains its power to kick a third-party marketplace off of iOS at its sole discretion, no reasonable developer would be willing to utilize a third-party app store because they could be permanently separated from their audience at any time. This is a massive deal. Imagine you had people install apps through this other app store and then the app store just vanishes. How do you talk to your users and communicate, hey, you need to reinstall this somewhere else now? Good luck, especially if you're not using something like React Native where you can do cloud-side updates where you don't have to ship a new binary just to show different content. If you didn't build your app around this possibility, you're kind of screwed. Here's where things get crazy, though, as I was hinting at before. Apple said one of the reasons they terminated our account only a few weeks after approving it was because we publicly criticized their proposed DMA compliance plan. Apple cited this X post from this thread written by Tim Sweeney. Apple is retaliating against Epic for speaking out against Apple's unfair and illegal practices, just as they've done to other developers time and time again. I still can't actually believe this. I a Apple citing a tweet as the reason for suspending Epic's account and destroying potential competition is absurd. It's actually absurd, especially when this tweet is honestly relatively supportive. It's saying that he knows what Apple is capable of and that he hopes they go back to it. I did not read this tweet negatively. I read it as a negative comment on how Apple is currently behaving with some of these things with a positive outlook on what Apple has done and is capable of doing. If this type of support is enough to get you cut from the App Store, then I am screwed. And I'm a pretty big Apple fanboy, like one of the bigger. So for Apple to do this to someone who's trying to support them, trying to help them make a better platform that is better for their users and developers is absurdity. First and foremost, some important context of how Epic and Apple have worked together in the past, which uh, a lot of people seem to not know this. Fortnite, despite being banned from Apple platforms, was actually originally debuted at WWDC. I'd like to welcome to the stage Josh Adams and Billy Bramer for a quick demo. Last year, Metal revolutionized graphics on iOS. And now, Apple's amazed us again by bringing Metal to the Mac. Here, you're seeing Epic's upcoming multiplayer title, Fortnite, running entirely on Metal. We're modifying it directly within the Unreal Engine, a development tool that powers many of today's best games. This is one of many examples of Apple getting really close to working with the game world and then failing for stupid reasons. You could also include the Connectic stuff where you could play PS1 games on a Mac for like three weeks. We're really, really excited about games. And again, our goal is to have the best game machine in the world. Now, this is another game machine. It's the most popular game machine in the world. Wouldn't it be great if, if we could play some of those titles too? Hmm. <clears throat> well, at Macworld today, Connectix is introducing the Virtual Game Station. It is software. <laughs> it is software that they're going to sell for forty-nine dollars that turns your Mac into a Sony PlayStation. <laughs> Anyways, the important detail here is that Epic has worked with Apple for a long time. There's even a couple of things here that aren't being mentioned that I think are really important. This is a reveal that goes back to when Steve Jobs was still the presenter at these events back with the iPhone 4 in 2010, revealing a new game meant to break our understanding of what games were capable of. At the time, it was just called Project Sword, but it became Infinity Sword. And they showcased just how good of graphics you could do on an iPhone, all the way back in 2010. This is 14 years ago. Epic had established their not just like willingness, but the desire to actively work with Apple to showcase what their platforms were capable of for gaming. So cool. And to throw all of this away because they don't like how Epic wants to pay themselves and pay developers is absurdity, actual absurdity. They showcase a bunch of the ways they work together, including Epic releasing Epic Citadel on the App Store in 2010, as well as Infinity Blade series of games. 
They've also supported a ton of other apps like Rocket League, Post Party, Reality Scan, Live Link, Unreal Stage, Unreal Remote, Unreal Remote 2, just a ton of stuff. They're even shipping experimental support for the Vision Pro, which uh, one of my favorite random things is like an awkward pause and a cut to this black screen that just says Unity on it and nothing else. It was very clear when I was watching that it was meant to be a list. Like, we're partnering with companies like Unity and Epic, but they clearly cut it last minute to trim the other thing from it, so it was just Unity. We know there is a community of developers who have been building incredible 3D apps for years. And today, we are excited to share that we've been working with Unity to bring those apps to Vision Pro. Which, by the way, if you're making a new 3D platform, and your only platform is Unity, that's a bit of a joke. Epic has made the 3D platform for interactive experiences and not having them in your dub dub conference for your reveal of your fancy new 3D headset, that's sketchy and that sucks. And, app, and it's crazy to me still that Apple is being so, I don't want to say it other than like they're being so anal about this that they're not willing to work with Epic on things that are objectively beneficial to them and their brand. And this moment was very funny to me. I remember seeing this live and being like, what the hell? Why is this cut so weird? Oh, they can't put other engines there right now, can they? Yeah. And even then, they're still going to ship it. The DMA was designed to eliminate the very power imbalance that Apple is proving exists today. They claim to have total control to block competing stores and apps. We'll continue to fight to bring true competition and choice to iOS developers in Europe and around the world. How do we get here? We requested a developer account through Apple's official process, and Apple approved our account. In direct communications with Apple, as well as public statements, Epic has been transparent about our intentions for the developer account and Epic Game Store. We requested one of Apple's DMA consultations and were denied. At their request, we assured Apple that Epic will comply with all terms of its developer agreements. Then their lawyer sent our lawyers a letter terminating our Epic Games Sweden AB account. Below is our correspondence with Apple. Dear Craig, Epic intends to exercise its rights under the DMA to develop and distribute Epic Game Store as an alternative app marketplace on iOS devices in the EU. We look forward to providing customers with a fantastic place to find the best mobile apps for their iOS devices and interact with their friends while providing developers with a fair and open distribution channel. We've applied for and obtained an Apple developer program account for Epic Games Sweden AB. Yes, they have to use their Sweden arm of their business to do this because the US arm's not allowed to. Anyways. They plan to use this account for developing an Epic Game Store iOS app. We also plan to use this account to develop a Fortnite native app for distribution through the Epic Game Store iOS app. Again, Fortnite's not allowed to go through the current App Store because they want to process payments themselves, which Apple doesn't allow for App Store apps, but third-party apps like Epic Game Store ones theoretically could. We have several questions about the program, including, can a developer obtain a marketplace entitlement for distribution of their own first-party titles? Will a developer obtaining the marketplace entitlement for distribution of their own titles be subject to multiple CTF fees? As in, do they have to pay a fee for the install as the app store and also a fee as the app creator for the purchases being made? Because then they're double dipping, which sucks. So we're going to place specific requirements on business models or content guidelines an alternative marketplace could implement. This is an important detail. because A big part of why I support these alternative app stores is that Apple has just chosen certain industry categories to ban. The idea of game streaming on your phone is something Apple doesn't like. And even though you can stream a movie, a TV show, a book, music, audio stories, whatever the hell you want, as soon as it's interactive, they claim that streaming an interactive experience is circumventing their app store. And the only way they'll let you stream a game is if you also offer that game as an individual purchasable thing that they've reviewed and approved. And an app that pulls all of those together, they don't allow that at all. This has prevented Microsoft from pushing xCloud and the Xbox Cloud experience because Apple just won't let them. They've had to build it all as a web app instead using the Bluetooth web APIs for your controller in hopes of getting something workable because Apple has just outright said they don't want to support that industry category. Are they going to enforce those same rules with these other app stores? Probably, which sucks. And they're just looking for an answer. The next point is that they have no idea how they actually access these marketplace APIs or what that looks like. Are they going to get it when they're approved? When does that happen? And how exactly can a developer distributing only through alternative app marketplaces effectuate the in-writing requirements of the opt-out in Section 2E? Just weird specific details they have to in-writing approve of that they're looking for more info on. We've requested a consultation session that Apple is conducting regarding the changes impacting apps in the EU, and we're looking forward to addressing the above questions in that session. We appreciate it if you would provide these questions to the person responsible for the consultation in advance. We're also happy to discuss directly with you if you'd prefer. Please let us know. This is from Steve at Epic. 
to Craig Federici, who's in charge of all things App Store and apps at Apple. Really cool to send this ahead of time to let the person they're consulting with, theoretically, know what types of questions they're going to have to answer. They followed up, stating that they have not received, or this is their follow-up that was posted at the top. We received an email stating Apple will not provide us a slot for the DMA consultations. We are disappointed that Epic will not have a chance to discuss the upcoming changes with your experts. As indicated in my previous email, we have several important questions that we would like to discuss and would like to arrange a meeting outside of the consultation program to discuss these questions with Apple. They're putting an app store on the platform that has a bunch of crazy random rules. They need to respond. They need to work with you on that. If they're going to make these rules, they need to explain them, and they're not. This is a letter straight from Phil Schiller at Apple to Tim Sweeney, the CEO of Epic. This is where things fall apart. Hey, Tim, hope you're well. As you're aware, Apple is deeply committed to the success of developers and to providing the best, most secure experience possible for users. One of the ways we ensure that the Apple ecosystem delivers these commitments is by requiring all participants in the Apple Developer Program to abide by its terms, including the Apple Developer Program License Agreement. We have launched a comprehensive plan to comply with the new regulations for the DMA, which requires changes to all the things they have to change. For developers, these changes include new capabilities and business terms. Because these changes required by the DMA also introduce greater risks to the ecosystem, the changes also include additional protections for users. Epic Games Sweden recently enrolled in the developer program. According to Epic's website, this entity will operate the mobile Epic Games Store and Fortnite in Europe. We welcome all developers to the developer program so long as they follow the rules. Those rules, including the DPLA and the App Store Review Guidelines, are intended to protect the integrity of the ecosystem, developers large and small, and most importantly, users. Accordingly, developers who are unable or unwilling to keep their promises can't continue to participate in the developer program. In the past, Epic has entered into agreements with Apple and then broke them. For example, you testified that Epic Games Incorporated entered into the developer program with full understanding of its terms and then chose to intentionally breach that agreement with Apple. This is in reference to when they added their own payment option to Fortnite. When you sign up for the App Store and you sign up and agree to all of Apple's terms, one of the terms is you won't add your own payment processing for things that aren't physical goods. And they broke that rule and Epic removed them. That went to court and they testified that they did indeed agree to those terms. So he's just rubbing that in their face. You've already broken our rules after agreeing to them. You've even testified in court that you did that. Why should we trust you now? You also testified that Epic deliberately violated Apple's rules to make a point and for financial gain. More recently, you've described our DMA compliance plan as hot garbage, a horror show, and a devious new instance of malicious compliance. And you've complained about what you call junk fees and Apple taxes. Your colorful criticism of our DMA compliance plan, coupled with Epic's past practice of intentionally violating contractual provisions with which it disagrees, strongly suggests that Epic Sweden does not intend to follow the rules. Another intentional breach could threaten the integrity of the iOS platform, as well as the security and privacy of users. You have stated that allowing enrollment of the Epic Games Sweden into the developer program is a good faith move by Apple. We invite you to provide us with written assurance that you are also acting in good faith and that Epic Games Sweden will, despite your public actions and rhetoric, honor all of its commitments. In plain, unqualified terms, please tell us why we should trust Epic at this time. What the fuck, Phil? <laughs> that that sentence at the end, what the hell? Tim's response is nice, short, and sweet. Hey, Phil, thanks for reaching out. Epic and its subsidiaries are acting in good faith and will comply with all terms of current and future agreements with Apple. And we'll be glad to provide Apple with any specific further assurances on that topic that you'd like. And here is the final response they got. <laughs> You'll notice this last set of the documents looks a little different. That's because these are from a legal team, not emails between the executives. Dear Gary, Epic Games Sweden AB recently enrolled in the Apple Developer Program. According to Epic's website, this entity will operate the mobile Epic Game Store in Fortnite in Europe. The rest of this is just complaining about Apple rules being broken by Epic, the same things that Phil said before. But here's where it gets interesting. Mr. Sweeney's response to that request was wholly insufficient and not credible. It boiled down to an unsupported trust us. History shows, however, that Epic is verifiably untrustworthy, hence the request for meaningful commitments. And the minimal assurances in Mr. Sweeney's curt response were swiftly undercut by a litany of public attacks on Apple's policies, compliance plan, and business model. As just one example, here's the tweet that I showed at the beginning. Moreover, a recent submission in the Australian litigation suggests that Epic Games Sweden AB is part of a global effort to undermine or evade Apple's rules. 
Apple is rightly concerned that Epic Games Sweden AB does not intend to or adhere to its contractual commitments to Apple and is in fact a vehicle to manipulate proceedings in other jurisdictions. Apple is fiercely committed to protecting the integrity of the iOS platform as well as its intellectual property. Apple's App Store rules, which Epic has flagrantly violated in the past, protect the security, safety, and privacy of users. They benefit all developers and they increase interbrand competition. Given the past and current conduct of Epic, Apple cannot allow Epic Games Suite and AB to be part of its ecosystem. Please be advised that Apple has effective immediately terminated the developer program membership of Epic Games Suite and AB. How insane is it that they linked a tweet as their only example of Epic in here, and then a paragraph and a half later, start by saying they terminated the account. This feels fake. Like we're in some crazy alternate dimension. How surreal is it that a tweet is being linked in a legal doc to shut down Apple's competition? What? I think it's important that we talk about this. The reason that I'm making this video is because the publicity works. I and many others covered the awful changes to progressive web apps in the new iOS release in the EU. And Apple walked it back. They weren't forced to by the courts. They chose to. Last month, Apple confirmed iOS 17.4 would remove support for home screen web apps, which is their term for progressive web app, which means it's a website that doesn't run in the browser the traditional way and has access to more things on your phone and can run offline. It's a way to make an app without having to go through the app store. Limited, but useful. Apple was planning on removing them with the newest iOS in the EU because home screen websites would have to have access to other engines. So they said, fuck that, we're dropping it. There was a huge outcry from me, from the Open Web Advocacy Group, from Tim Sweeney, from many others, including people like 9to5Mac, saying this is not great. This is going to break apps that already exist for people who are already using them. But Apple has now walked it back and says that they'll continue to offer the existing home screen web app capability in the EU. Here's their full statement. Previously, Apple announced plans to remove home screen web apps capabilities in the EU as part of their efforts to comply with the DMA. The need to remove this capability was informed by the complex security and privacy concerns associated with web apps to support alternative browser engines that would require building new integration architecture that does not currently exist in iOS. This might sound like bullshit. It's not. The browser has to integrate with so many things, and then once it's a PWA, it has to integrate with even more. Exposing all of those things at an OS level such that other browsers can safely use them is incredibly non-trivial. And if they're rushing to hit a deadline, I can see why this would suck for them. That said... They caved. We've received requests to continue to offer support for home screen web apps in iOS. Therefore, we'll continue to support them in the EU. The support means home screen web apps will continue to be built directly on WebKit and its security architecture and align with the security and privacy model for native apps on iOS. This is interesting because they're not going to add support for the other engines. It's still going to be WebKit based, but I think they're hoping that this doesn't count against the default browser stuff they just lost. We'll see. It's actually possible here. The EU says, no, you have to support other engines. And they say, fine, we'll support none then and then scrap it. But this is them testing what the EU is going to swipe them for while at the same time doing the thing people asked due to the outcry. This is a good call out from 9to5Mac. This is an example of the vagueness of the DMA, which is very real. Websites need to be able to go through whatever browser you select, but does a web app need to as well if it's using native platform stuff? It's not clear in the DMA whether or not progressive web apps count as websites with their existing rules. Apple assumed they did, deleted this, and now they're not sure. And due to the outcry, they're going to risk it a little bit. But the reason I bring this up is the associated pushback. Us complaining about this loudly and publicly resulted in Apple doing something that might be against the law, according to the EU. We don't know yet, but it's also very obviously pro-user and also pro-developer. Might not be pro browser engine dev, but it's pro everyone else. Hopefully, we can see a similar response to what's going on here, where the outcry from founders in and outside of gaming and apps, from people like Paul Graham, the CEO and creator of Y Combinator, one of the most legendary people in the finance world, and obviously our boy Tim, and hopefully even myself, maybe, just maybe, we can see some change. That said, I wouldn't count on it. Apple is very, very strict about who's allowed to publish apps and what things you can even install apps through. And I don't know if I see a future where they actually allow alternative app stores in good faith. It seems like they're going to push the extents of these new laws to make it so hard to produce one of these app stores 
that you give up before you get there. Would love to be wrong about this one. So if anyone on Apple's listening, prove me wrong. I dare you. <sighs> Peace, nerds.